Always, always, always be interviewing, always be networking and figuring out what your next play is. The current oncologists have not been very rep friendly. I want those doctors to leave. I didn't care to burn that bridge. This is just a salty person. Now, why did I leave the health tech space? Us being reps, we are vulnerable It is a small world and I didn't want to burn a bridge that I didn't need to burn. Did I have a weird feeling as I was interviewing, I wasn't the top pick? It's just a fluffy title. As a sales rep, we get lucky. I sold a $1.2 million account. So this is my warning to you guys about wanting to take chances with startups. He sexually harassed her and she had the proof. He got into a tussle with the CEO that the CEO straight bitch slapped him in the face. Another day, another dollar to be made on this beautiful day out in rural Kentucky. I'm out here driving on these little two lane roads with the constant thought and dread of the gremlin charger, you know, just constantly coming after me. I'm tracking it and I actually put my entire day as a path inside of the Tesla because it's taking into account my charge and letting me know where chargers are along the way and when I need to charge up so that hopefully I don't run out. The yesterday, actually, I got all the way down to 2%, which is exactly what it predicted I would be at uh, before getting to a charger. And you know, that little butthole puckering of just not knowing if you're gonna make it is not fun. It really isn't. I'm looking forward to the change to the RAV4 whenever that finally gets delivered. And just knowing that basically anytime, oh, hold on, getting a work call, BRB. All right, I'm back. Still traveling through these cute little towns as I head to my next cancer center. And I was thinking about two different things. The first one will be just how my last stop went. And another very standoffish, closed up shop. I reached out to several of my counterparts just to get a lay of the land before going in and they all basically said the same thing, that if you don't have an appointment there, they're gonna shut you down, not want to really see you for anything and basically just pawn you off to a phone call so that you can schedule a lunch or a snack or a breakfast. and. The receptionist, sure enough, pushed me out, basically was like, yeah, I don't handle that. This is the person that handles it. So I asked to speak with that person. Uh, she was at least nice enough, because I did say, you know, the, they, the way that they schedule is at the beginning of every month, you call to schedule your appointments. And it's already past the beginning of the month. And so me being new, I'm playing the new card, I'm just saying, man, uh, I missed that opportunity for the beginning of this month. Is there any chance that I can speak with, I believe her name is Dana or Ruth? I can't remember at this moment. But regardless, I asked and they did go back to go check and she was not at her desk. And I am traveling all over today. So I only had about 20 minutes to chill and wait there. So I said, that's not, that's not a problem. I'll give her a call a little bit later and see about uh, getting on the calendar for scheduling a breakfast, lunch, or a snack. Then I find out, which again, I already knew from lay of the land, that this is kind of a location right now that's in limbo. They've got two providers here that are on their way out. And she mentioned, this is the receptionist mentioned to me, that they are currently interviewing and they hired a firm, a recruiting firm that is interviewing and trying to find some new oncologists to come out to this area. And she even mentioned to me that the current oncologists have not been very rep friendly. So she said, hoping that the new people that they do find, uh, hopefully will have better luck with them as in being rep friendly. So that's really nice to hear that even the receptionist at this office knows that it's not a rep friendly location. I'm sure she's been at places where it is rep friendly and they get to see the reps more frequently. And that being said, I'm definitely going to keep this one at the top of my list of checking in with my counterparts and figuring out what doctor is on the way. Cause sometimes you can figure out who's coming. 
And if you figure that out, you can go ahead and start reaching out to them via LinkedIn, Facebook, or whatever, and trying to develop a relationship with them prior to them even showing up. I used to do that a lot within the medical device space. You would figure out which fellows were going to be working at certain areas and where they were coming from. So you would reach out to them. Uh, we did a lot of basically like happy hours where we would invite them and basically give them a lay of the land of the different products that we have to offer, where we offer those products. And on top of that, just, you know, getting to know them and building that relationship. So that's that's my key takeaway from that meeting is while those providers are on their way out, I'm not going to just give up and wait till the new providers come in. I'm still going to try and get in there and develop a relationship with them because who knows, maybe they are just moving somewhere else in my territory or if they're moving out of my territory, this is still again, as I keep preaching, a patient focused mindset. If they go somewhere else, I know my product. I know my product is the best. I'm not just throwing that out there. Again, this is my opinion, but regardless, my product is fantastic. It's helping patients. It has the data behind it to support it. I want those doctors to leave using my product more and wanting to use it more when they get to the next place that they're going to. Now, the other thing that I wanted to touch on uh, that I got asked pretty recently is why did I leave the health tech space? Like what happened there? And this goes back to when I mentioned to you guys about interviewing and trusting your gut. Did I have a weird feeling as I was interviewing with this company and trying to figure out if this is where I wanted to go? A little bit, but I purposely did not listen to my gut because I wanted to try something new and I was listening to the whispers of Austin, Texas and all the people that lived around me that worked in health, not, not in healthcare tech, but they worked in the tech field and how much they loved it, how much money they were making, all, all the bells and whistles. And I couldn't find another oncology job at the time. Everywhere that I was looking, they just weren't hiring or the interviews that I was going on, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't the top pick. So I needed another option because I didn't want to find an opportunity at, let's say, a similar pharma company not in oncology and still be trying to interview to get back into oncology. This space and the pharmaceutical space, as large as it is, it, it, is a, it is a small world. And I didn't want to burn a bridge that I didn't need to burn. So I was heavily, heavily putting all my eggs into the healthcare tech space basket. Because if it didn't work out for me, or I found another opportunity during my time there, I didn't care to burn that bridge because it was a space that I was not familiar with. But at the same time, I just knew that I didn't have any experience. So I was really trying to sell myself hard into getting into one of these roles. And if it worked out, great, because I'd be making a shit ton of money and I'd be super stoked about it. And the, the change wouldn't, wouldn't basically be a bad move on my side because I ended up finding, let's say, another space that I was enjoying and that I got into. But did I get a sense of weirdness as I was interviewing for this role? A little bit. Again, this was a complete startup, very small company, um, one VP of sales essentially, and they, but that wasn't his title. He was the chief chief growth officer. Same thing though, chief, like VP of sales. He was just the one that was in charge of the entire sales division. And then when I say the entire sales division, there were only two other reps that were at the same level as me and they had different titles than me because they had just started a little bit earlier than I did. So they were the VP of their region, but the VP of what? Because they didn't have anybody working under them. It was just more so a title to be able to get into discussions with other people at with similar titles. So if I had just your basic sales rep as my title, and I'm trying to get a conversation with a CEO, a CMO, a CNO, all these different people, 
that have these very high titles, but I had this very low title, not, it's not going to necessarily work out in my favor that often. So of course, my title there being the regional sales director, it's just a fluffy title. It wasn't anything special. I mean, I, I, when, you, when you look at the grand scheme of things, I worked right under the chief growth officer, but if there's nobody else higher than them, I mean, like it, it doesn't change anything. I just had a, a, a fluffy title. So yes, in the grand scheme of things, I could play it off that I got an awesome promotion, but it was all it was all just fluff because there was nobody that was working under me. the The ultimate goal was that we would have so much growth that we would have people working under us, but that wasn't happening. And and I digress on the idea. Uh, on what I was talking about to begin with. So here I am interviewing for this role. It took pretty much the entirety of from when I found out that I was getting let go to all the way until I got hired. Pretty much that entirety was me interviewing that entire time with this one company on top of interviewing with a bunch of other companies and going through the entire processes of those companies. By the time I accepted this job offer, I turned down two other offers and I bowed out of one just because in my opinion it wasn't what I wanted to get into. The numbers weren't necessarily matching what what I was thinking and in the grand scheme of things where I am now and looking back at it, the director that wanted to hire me and one of the other people that were there aren't even at the company anymore. So I made the right decision there. Now why did I leave the health tech space? I seriously just was not in love with it and I was immediately turned off by the company that I was working for and the leadership there within the first two and a half months of being hired. I got very lucky, I am not going to lie about that and as a sales rep, we get lucky rarely but we do get lucky and I went to one of the trade shows, um, met with somebody there and they happened to be in love with our product and they happened to be in my territory. So as any sales rep would do, I continued to follow up with that person and we moved them through the sales process. And at the time, this was right before the end of the year, so this was in December, the COO of the organization was helping me make that sale. So we went from meeting to meeting to meeting, and we finally got to a point to where we were gonna close on this deal, but they wanted to close on this deal this year, that, that was last year in 2023, so that it would boost up their numbers. And as I saw that, I'm thinking, well, that seems slightly unethical, but it is what it is. I, I mean, I'm brand new. I don't understand how this space works, but we were going to basically sign the contract and say that we are getting payment that day, but really we weren't getting payment for 90 days out. And when, when we were writing up that contract, he basically told me the same thing like, so Pierre, because we're not getting paid for 90 days, the, the difference within this one is you won't get paid out on contract signing until 90 days out when we get paid. And very unfortunate for me, I basically didn't have a leg to stand on at that point. Um, just had to go with whatever they were saying, but it was cool. I sold a $1.2 million account. And at the time that was probably the second or third largest account sold to like a single entity within the organization. And while it was very cool at the very beginning, it immediately lost its, its lust when less than a month later, I'm at a meeting with the entire basically organization and we're trying to hire another rep to cover the east region because i was covering central and we already had a west rep and they had let go of this other rep that i had that was there when i started and another feeling in my gut that i got was whenever i got hired on and they're already basically shit talking that person and telling me the brand new rep how they're going to let them go i i looked at that in two ways. It was a double-edged sword. I was excited that I was getting pulled into the fold and kind of told these things in, in confidence and feeling good because I was making 
some headway when it came to setting up appointments and trying to move things forward. And again, this was my mindset at the time. I was told that typically accounts flip between 90 to 180 days. So I was thinking within the next 90 days, I'm gonna be selling some more accounts. And I was already making essentially a name for myself because I had just sold a $1.2 million account. And my quota was 3 million. So here I am making huge headway already into my quota at the very beginning of the year. And I was already in contract conversations with another entity and they were going to be at about like 300,000. So right away, I'm already at half of my quota and it's just January. But I, I'm hearing all this shit talking of the other rep that they're about to let go. And right before our national meeting, national, it's a, it's a small organization, we just all went to where the corporate headquarters was. They let that guy go. And I spoke with him and he let me know of a lot of like issues with the organization, et cetera, et cetera. And basically just wanted me to know what, what I was in for. But at that point, I, I can't complain about it. I'm already in, like I'm, I'm devoting myself to this new role while also still on the back burner looking for a oncology opportunity somewhere else. Because from the very beginning, I could already tell I was not enjoying the sales process literally having the same tech conversation, tech demos over and over and over with multiple people within the same organization. It was like I would sell one person to basically make them a champion to then sell it to the next person. And it, it was just so boring to me. I, I really couldn't get behind it, but I was like, all right, look, I, I, it looks like I can make some decent money. So I'm going to continue to keep pushing while also still on the back burner, be looking for another opportunity to get back into oncology. And granted, I took a solid pay cut to come join them, knowing that the overall package would be better, et cetera, et cetera. But I was like, whatever. I, I really wanted to test out the waters here before getting into the next role. And while they let that rep go and I see what's going on and they, that rep tells me of some really crazy things, at the, I, I'm taking it all with a grain of salt. I'm thinking, this is just a salty person that got let go. Now, let me tell you one of the little stories of what he told me. He got into a tussle with the CEO that the CEO straight bitch slapped him in the face. And I took that like, yeah, right, no, that didn't happen. And then sure enough, I asked a couple of people a little bit later and it happened. It happened in front of people. And I'm honestly surprised that that guy didn't walk away with a fat check from the CEO for that action. Like, what the hell? How does a CEO straight up bitch slap a rep in front of other people and have no ramifications from it? But us being reps, we are vulnerable and we just feel like we need to put up with shit like that because it's, it's the norm. It's what happens like, oh, I'm at a startup and I have the potential to make all this money so I just need to put up with some of this stuff. But the problem with that I saw immediately because as I'm at my national meeting, we're trying to hire this other person. My, my chief growth officer can see that the CEO is getting a bit drunk at one of our dinners and is kind of going on these rants and could see the writing on the walls. He had worked with this guy for many years. So instead of protecting his new hire and also the other rep that he was trying to hire, he just decided to tell me, hey, this would, um, I'm gonna take the, the new guy home or to the hotel and we're gonna go ahead and get out of this dinner. It was already, dinner was over. It was like about to start the after drinks. And, and so this is what he's telling me that he's going to basically take that guy home and didn't tell me anything that he saw. Like didn't, didn't tell me about the writing on the wall. So I stick behind with our COO and our chief of product and strategy. And I'm at this, I'm at this uh, after hours having drinks with our CEO too. And here we are trying, um, or I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying here we are trying to get somebody to come join us uh, as if I'm doing anything. Here is 
the CMO of another large health tech organization that that technically we're trying to schmooze. And that, this guy wants to join our organization and our CEO is straight up like, like verbally bitch slapping the CMO, telling him like how dumb he is and this and that and how dare you go behind my back and take, take these other interviews when you want to come work with me, et cetera. Like, like basically acting as if like this, like his shit don't stink. It's just wild. And I'm just sitting there like having a drink, trying to blend in and and not be seen. And then out of nowhere, he turns his rage toward me, a guy that just sold a $1.2 million deal and tells, tells the group at the table, which again is the COO, the chief growth, uh, not growth officer, the, the chief of product and strategy. And this, this CMO from another organization looks over at me and tells me that he told our chief growth officer to fire that last rep in a minute. Like that, like, like when I saw that people weren't producing, blah, blah, blah. I said, get him the fuck out of here. And you know what happened, Pierre? Fired fired. What the fuck have you done for me? Huh? Blah, blah, blah. You don't know shit. All like, dude, I'm, I, I'm like, he is going off on me. And I'm just like, why am I being like berated right now? When literally I just sold an account and I only started two months ago. Like, what do you mean? I haven't sold shit for you. I've done more than your last two reps brought in more revenue than your last two reps combined for their entire last year in two months. And here he is like braiding me. And again, th- this is, this is a, a sales world. And also I look at this as, as like my F1 mentality. You're only as good as your last race. So I'm as good as my last sale and I haven't had a sale in, a, in apparently a month at this time. So what have I done for them? And at this point, he's literally like belittling me in front of the COO and the chief of product and strategy and they do nothing to defend me. And as we leave later on that night, they both kind of just tell me that this is something that happens uh, with the CEO, that you just have to let him go on his little rants and yada yada. So basically they tuck their tails and just don't do anything and allow this man to basically belittle them. And I've seen it done too. I've seen him belittle those guys and they just tuck their tail because he's the CEO. And I'm just like, his organization would fucking fail if these people didn't tuck their tails and just decided I'm not dealing with this and got up and left. But it was then and there when that happened that I called my wife and I said, this is not the place that I need to be at, but I can't just quit because I have a family to think about, which is also why that rep didn't, you know, file anything, file charges or anything after he got bitch slapped by the CEO because he had two kids in college. Like he doesn't want to lose his income uh, due to that, but he should have done something about it because multiple people saw it because this guy paid an unset amount uh, to another receptionist that was at, at, at the organization because he sexually harassed her and she had the proof to show it. And so instead of taking things, you know, public and this and that, she probably got a fat check, some undisclosed amount and had to sign an NDA to basically keep her, keep her mouth shut at how like terrible this guy is. So here I am two months into a role that I essentially had for a year because I was waiting to get into a better opportunity like I'm at right now. And I bring all this up to let you guys know that it really sucks when you are the bottom of the totem pole of an organization, but you should never let your self-worth fall so low that you allow somebody to treat you the way that they treated you. And I, I feel for the guy that got slapped and basically told to, to F off and then get fired all at the same time and not even get any kind of severance package whatsoever based off of what just happened. So I'm just completely baffled at how they allowed that to happen and didn't bring up any any charges. I myself have filed with a couple of different uh, legal practices trying to figure out 
how to get paid commissions that I didn't get paid. So this is my warning to you guys about wanting to take chances with startups. While it seems like roses, I'm letting you know right now, my experience was god awful and I wouldn't wish it upon like one of my enemies. And let alone, I wouldn't wish this experience among like other people that, that my counterpart ended up having to go through. This is just absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe this man gets to get away with that. I tried to, you know, f go multiple different routes of trying to figure out how I can file something against that organization. And it's really difficult. It sucks that HR is not there for you. They are there for themselves and they don't care about you. They're there to protect the organization. So that is my war, like an additional warning to you guys. Don't don't think that HR is there for you. If you feel like something is going on and you need to start protecting yourself, start putting shit in emails, writing it out and sending like what you feel is wrong to the people that essentially wronged you or your upper management and get HR involved at the same time and be the first person to do it. Because if you wait and let's say you get let go or anything like that, it is no longer an issue of them protecting you. It's the organization protecting itself. It, it all lined up perfectly, but they didn't pay me my bonus, not, not my bonus, my commissions on an account that I sold. So I am in the process of still legally trying to figure out how to make them have to pay me that because contractually they owe me that. But it's companies like this and people like that, that CEO that just don't give a shit about you as a person and they would rather take care of themselves and and it was just so bothersome that during that entire year, the majority of it, I'm sitting there waiting to get paid on my account and they're not paying me yet. They're still taking me out to like these fancy dinners and flexing the amount of money that they have, flying their private jet to to the different meetings that, that we have, but they can't pay me out on something that they're getting paid on. It was just wild. And it that's basically my 411 on, on why I left why I'm no longer in that space, why I, I personally don't believe I'll ever get back into that space, and why you guys need to do your due diligence on where you're going to go. It was an unfortunate event for me that panned out very fortunately because I was able to go exactly where I wanted to be, and that is why you as a rep and even higher level people like your managers and their managers and first line leaders, that is why they always have a foot out the door. Why they are always interviewing and networking and meeting other people because organizations do not care about you in general. They care about the bottom line and that you are just a statistic to them. So always, always, always be interviewing, always be networking and figuring out what your next play is. Even if you are completely in love with where you are at, always know your worth because the second that you just put it on the back burner and pretend like it doesn't exist is when you're going to be put in a situation that you don't want to be in. And that situation could have been averted if you had other opportunities, other relationships that you could lean on and different things like that. So keep that for thought. I'm at my next account. I'm going in. You made more money than those bastards. Oh, oh. You think I cannot make more money from those bastards? I will show you bastard. Look at my face. And do not fucking stop me, you bastard.